let's take a step back and now just talk about where you think HRV belongs in the hierarchy of health metrics. Um, we, we've talked about so many different types of health metrics, and we've talked about how output metrics tend to be preferable, you know, or we can sort of think of them as functional metrics. Um, you know, I like an oral glucose tolerance test more than a hemoglobin A1C. One is kind of functional. It actually is a test. It watches how you do something. VO2 max, strength, those are more functional tests than maybe resting heart rate or uh, muscle mass, right? Muscle mass is great. It's predictive as is resting heart rate. But when you actually put the workout, um, HRV is obviously a readout state. What where do you think on the dashboard of health longevity, uh, where, where do you where do you place it? You know, I think it's important to monitor as you're going along. But I would say if all your other metrics are telling you you're healthy and you're going the right direction, nine times out of ten, it's we tell you the, the same thing. The the point where I would be more uh, aware of it is where it's very low and you don't have a reason for that. You want to figure that out. I've, we've had people have arrhythmias they had no idea about, and they go to the doctor and they have some serious heart condition that they need to be aware of. But I would just say long-term, it's it should line up with VO2. It should line up with your metabolic market. It should line up with all of this stuff. It's easier to track because we can measure it on a daily basis. I think that's probably the advantage I would say it has is you're not getting a VO2 max test every day, obviously, or every week, or every month, you know, you're not doing lactate testing, you're not doing these markers that are more output based that are really important frequently enough to get feedback of whether or not you're going the right direction. So I think we can look at HRV in a more granular daily basis, just kind of say, am I going the right direction? And that's probably more of a utility than a great predictor of, you know, something. And we can look at those daily changes to help us make more informed decisions. We can't do that with VO2 max or with, you know, more invasive tests. So it, it's a more, uh, you know, narrow data point, but it gives us something we can use more actionably than these longer term tests, that I think are better actual measures of outcome. And if we see our HRV trending down significantly, that is a warning sign. We're doing something wrong. Our body is not adapting the way that it should be. And we need to make adjustments, whether it's to training or, or lifestyle. So I think it's used differently, right? Like we yeah. use VO2 and we use uh, those sorts of output measures as are we going the right direction and we have some prognostic value specifically from them. We use HRV to say, you know, are we more likely to be making improvements in the short term or are we heading the wrong direction where if we keep doing that for a long period of time, we're going to either see the benefit or the cost depending on which direction we're going. So I think they're, they're different. Is there a number, Joel, on the um, the log normal transformation you're doing on the RMSSD, a, a number below which if it's consistently there, you think that, you know, I would, I would want to inquire more fifties, forties. I mean, those are, those are pretty low numbers for, for a okay. Again, user. just for folks listening, it depends that's on not too. the RMSSD number, right? right? The RMSSD number it might be, be far, far lower 10, than that. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you, you really do have to be specific of what we're talking about, the systems. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a, you know, N of one, but I was at a guy, there was a guy named Mel Siff who you probably aren't familiar with, but he was a very well-known sports scientist. He wrote a book called Super Train. I was at his house with the original uh, HRV system I was using and I had all the metrics and his RMSD was like five and he just looked really bad. You know, I said, then he'd heart, had a heart attack and I said, Mel, this looks really concerning. And he was, you know, he kind of brushed it off and he died of a heart attack, uh, you know, a few months later. And so, you know, if you're really seeing these super low arm SSD or Morpheus numbers, like it's definitely an indication that that autonomic nervous system is not responding well to the world around it. And if it's really, really low, you know, there could be a, a legitimate medical concern that's driving that. So if you're, you know, Morpheus 40s, 30s, and you're, you're just not getting up, it's probably worth looking into. And it's something to definitely be concerned about. And do you see the opposite where really high numbers or a sudden change from low to high can indicate an arrhythmia or something like that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You definitely do see these these kind of weird numbers come out, you know, that could be arrhythmia, that could be medications, that could be who knows. You see some of these, these things jump around from anomalies that you just kind of like, oh, that's an artifact, I don't know what happened. And then sometimes you do see a medication or you, know, you see weird type stuff with COVID and you definitely see some weird stuff in the data that you want to be aware of that, you know, you probably wouldn't pick up otherwise. I would say HRV is more of a leading indicator and in kind of how you feel and some of those symptoms can mm. come days later. Mm. So you'll oftentimes pick up something that looks weird and then two days later you get a cold or you get the flu or you get some sort of uh, thing that explained it. 